We had the heart to tell the story about our foundation as a nation, but also the journey that's created us. We're one of the best nations on the planet. Every index speaks to that. And the foundation of our nation is God and His Word. I didn't hear any of this for the first 20 years of my life. Tell us some of those stories. Yeah, well, there, there's so many. It's almost every sector. Uh, Emily Murphy. So she became the first woman magistrate, one of the final straws to, to, to allow women to be seen as persons. Mm. Tommy Douglas, he's known for helping to start our health care system in Canada. And he was a pastor. It came out of a pastor's heart. right? Yes, in Saskatchewan. How's the Bible impacted Canada's government? In, in so many different ways. The Constitution Act of 1982, we added that that God has supremacy. Well, that's embedded in the very fiber of who we are as a nation. It was also added in our national anthem in the 1980s, and it's etched in stone in the Peace Tower. All through the symbol of us as a nation is scripture infused. Welcome back to the show. You know, it was years ago that a wise Jewish rabbi said to me, Canada is great because people of faith have been involved in its shaping. And Canada will continue to be great if people of faith continue to be involved. And he was speaking of the positive influence of the Bible on and expressed through the lives of so many who pioneered Canada's democratic system, hospitals, schools, core businesses, media, and more. I have to be honest though, when I first heard this, it was a bit offensive to me because all I had ever been taught regarding our nation's faith history was the bad stuff, mainly the atrocities of the residential schools at the hands of the government and the church at the time. These atrocities were horrific, full stop, and we need to ensure that they never happen again. I did not know, however, that over the years, there were also many noble and respectable founding fathers and mothers of the faith who were used to save lives. They were friends of the indigenous people and who simply were looking for a land where they could raise their families honestly in peace and worship God freely. Young women like Marie Guillard, known as the mother of New France, a friend of the indigenous in the area surrounding Quebec City. She taught the First Nations children how to read and establish some of the nation's first hospitals. Men like Jean de Brébeuf, who was a friend of the Huron and was eventually killed with them in a tribal battle against the Iroquois. Women like Agnes MacPhail, who stood as the first female member of parliament, deeply motivated to build a better nation because of her faith, and the list goes on. We give thanks for the many upright ones who helped build the foundation for what has become one of the most stable and prosperous nations of the earth, Canada. With me in studio today is someone who knows these inspiring stories well. Paul Richardson is the president of the Bible League Canada, which works in over 40 nations to raise up local leaders with Bible literacy to plant churches. For Canada's 150th, Paul and his team put emphasis on Canada and produced an amazing book called One Dominion, which outlines our rich faith heritage. He is with us today to discuss our history and just how the Bible has impacted it. I'm looking forward to this inspiring discussion. So without further delay, let's get to it. George Etienne Cartier and John A. Macdonald formed an alliance with the goal to persuade the British North American colonies that the time was ripe to unite. In 1864, leaders from all the colonies met in Charlottetown where they proposed forming a national confederation. In his morning devotions, Leonard Tilley, the premier of New Brunswick, read Psalm 72. He shall have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Tilly thought, what a splendid name to give Canada. The Fathers of Confederation agreed. On July 1st, 1867, the British North American Act uniting Upper and Lower Canada, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia was established by royal proclamation, the Dominion of Canada was born. Paul Richardson from Bible League Canada, president of Bible League Canada. It's such an honor to have you in studio today. And I have to admit, this uh, topic that we're going to talk about today and the book that you guys produced, One Dominion here, kind of wrecked me. You know, this is like, this is intense stuff, you know, in a good way. And so um, share with us a little bit about what you do with Bible League Canada, first of all, and then let's talk about this book. Sure, very simply, we want to see God's Word placed in people's hands mm. so God's Spirit can put it in their hearts, and we want to see a church planted in their neighborhood. Mm. And out of that community of faith 
comes transformation in villages and then communities. It's how Canada was formed. And we want to see the same thing happen in other nations. And you're working about 40 nations right now. That's right. Is Canada one of those 40 or in addition to? It's 43 counting Canada. Oh, 43 counting Canada. Great. So talk to us about this book. Give us a, a crash course and then share some stories. Sure. We, we had the heart uh, a couple years ago to tell the story about our foundation as a nation, but also the journey that's created us as a nation. We were one of the best nations on the planet. Every index tells and speaks to that. Mm -hmm. And so we want to tell the story that maybe hasn't been told recently about how uh, the foundation of our nation is God and his word. Mm -hmm. And that's helped create this great nation that we're part of now. And I want to say something. I'm Gen X. Okay. So I'm 44 this year, but I didn't hear any of this for the first 20 years of my life. Mm. I had no idea that Canada had like a rich faith heritage. Well, it's the foundation that has built us, but also as people were transformed by God's word, mm. the journey that they were on has helped form the nation that we have here today as well. So tell us some of those stories. Yeah, well, there, there's so many. It's almost every sector. And it, it starts with someone who first is transformed in their own heart, and then God used them to help form the nation that we enjoy today. You know, like there's uh, Emily Murphy, mm. where maybe we don't know too much about her, but she was the first female magistrate in the British Empire. And that came out of a heart that wanted to see women who were uh, undergoing great uh, trauma when their husbands left them and because they weren't persons they didn't have any recourse for land they couldn't own land and so she said I want to change that so she helped raise legislation in Canada mm -hmm. to help combat that and then she says, well someone needs to be a, a magistrate to help so she became the first woman magistrate well it was not long the inevitable happened where some person in court says, well, your rulings aren't valid because you're not a person. Mm. And that went all through the court system, right up to the Privy Council in, in the United Kingdom. And at, and at that point, it was deemed, said, no, women are persons. And that was one of the final straws, together with the Fantastic Five, one of the final straws to, to, to allow women to be seen as persons and with that, the vote. But it came out of a heart that, had, that was transformed by God's word. That's in the legislative system. But what about in our healthcare system? Mm. Tommy Douglas voted one of the best Canadians of all time. He's known for helping to start our healthcare system in Canada. And he was a pastor. It came out of a pastor's heart. One, right? Yes, in Saskatchewan in the Depression years. Yeah. And he saw people in his province as a pastor that, that could not uh, afford uh, health care for simple things and they suffered terribly by, because of it. Mm -hmm. And so then as he got into politics, that increase and in ate coming out of a heart of a pastor, coming out of a heart that was transformed by God's word. He says, I have to do something about this. And so God moved on him to bring their health care system into Canada. He was the first in the nation and has spread mm -hmm. from sea to sea in our nation now. And now we have uh, a remarkable remarkable system where people have access, no matter what the, the financial situation they are, they have access to great health care in Canada. Wow, that's huge. It that's is. Huge. Uh, what about our parliamentary system? You know, somebody said to me a while ago, they said, just think about the terms in Parliament. You've got Minister of Health, Minister of Justice, uh, Minister of Transportation, Prime Minister. Like, the, like, when people went into politics, they saw it as a ministry. And that's, that's a very Christian term. How has how's the Bible impacted Canada's government? Oh, in so many different ways, uh, where even in the terms, like you said, it speaks to ministers, where we're serving someone, we're serving the crown, we're serving the queen, and we recognize in, in the Commonwealth and in Canada that the, the authority does not come from heritage, it comes from God. Mm -hmm. So in our Constitution, in the Constitution Act of 1982, we added that, that God has supremacy, and so that's embedded in the very fiber of who we are as a nation. And that's actually was included uh, and added before the rule of law. Wow. So it talks about the supremacy of God and the rule of God and the rule of law. But it starts first with the supremacy of God. It was also added in our national anthem in the 1980s, where we said, God, keep our land, recognizing that, that the supremacy of God impacts our hearts as we sing. And it's etched in stone in the peace tower. And it's inscribed in metal in the bells, proclaiming about the supremacy of God and the, and the, the value and the role that the the Bible plays in transforming hearts as a foundation and as a journey to build the nation the way we are today. And I find that so intriguing because I would have thought that that stuff would have been added in like, you know, 150 years ago. But you're saying like, this is just the 80s. So this isn't like an old, old, old heritage, even like, you know, that's Well, powerful. the Peace Tower was, was a century ago. Yeah, yeah. But the Constitution... Constitution 
and the national anthem was very recent in our lifetime. And it's been added to make it even more secure, to make it even more pronounced, so that not only is it etched in stone and written on parchment, but even as we sing the national anthem, God keep our land, it's inscribed in our hearts Glorious as nations, yeah. as, as nationals, that we talk about what, what God wants to do in this That's nation. amazing. That is amazing. And I remember even reading that on the bells in the Peace Tower there, it actually doesn't it actually say glory to God in the highest? Yes. On the biggest one? So every time it rings, there's this peal that, that, that talks about, it's, it's famous because of Christmas, <laughs> but it's all across the land. It, some would say even the, the very symbol of Canada would be the Peace Tower. And, wow. the, and it's, it's right there in stone and yeah. metal in the chamber. And the Star of David, right? Word. So yeah. if somebody was to say like, listen, you got to separate like the Bible and government. It's like, you kind of have to decimate Parliament, right? The whole center block there because it's all over Parliament. And I'm not suggesting that anybody do that, by the way, but uh, wow, that's so, a lot of people don't know that. So that's really, really neat to share. Now, in a moment here, we're actually going to sh throw to a clip uh, that is uh, some modern day people of faith that are shaping our nation, a member of parliament, a uh, former premier, and someone who is very near and dear to our hearts. So let's watch that clip right after this. Through The Faith Teen Show, we're tackling issues influencing our nation's future, like freedom of conscience, racism, poverty, the debt, human trafficking, abortion, democracy, and much more. If you missed a show, you can watch anytime at Fateen.tv or on YouTube. We hope to see you there. We love Canada, and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference, and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit Fateen.tv or call 613-552-5572 to donate today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My favorite time of the year is just two short months away. With the Christmas season just around the corner, Canadians from across the country will be spending special time with their families and friends. Christmas is a time to reflect on our many blessings in Canada while also celebrating the birth of Jesus, the Savior for all the world. Some timeless words from Luke that have given all mankind joy and hope over the centuries. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. May the Christmas story of this humble birth in a stable remind us of the real, pe real hope given to all of us. From our Prince George Peace River, Northern Rockies family, to everyone across Canada, Merry Christmas. Here, here. A lot of emotions surround the Christmas season. Happiness, reverence, nostalgia, excitement. It's a favorite time of year for many of us. We look forward to family times of fun and laughter, seeing someone we love, opening a gift into which we have put a little thought, being with friends we don't see very often, relaxing and enjoying good food, sometimes a little too much good food, and refreshing our faith in the one who is the real reason behind it all. For unto all of us was born that day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And that baby named Jesus who was born that night grew into a man who told us to love one another. And that's the spirit of Christmas. George Matthew Adams says, I shall try to make my life an open fireplace so that people may be warmed and cheered by it, and so go out themselves to warm and cheer. That is because there are often other emotions that surround this season as well. Sadness, and loneliness, longing, discouragement. It seems that a refugee family was in a store purchasing essential items for establishing a home here for themselves. A woman, another customer, approached the family and asked some questions after which she went off to pick up a toy for the couple's little boy and then proceeded to pay for the toy and all the other items that they had gathered. It came to several hundred dollars. That is love in action. That is Christmas in action. 
an anonymous hero, just out sharing some warmth and cheer. A reminder for all of us that to whom much is given, of them much shall be required. Just like the restaurant in Moose Jaw that makes Christmas dinner for the less fortunate, the class of kids in Milestone who regularly visit a senior's home, or the families in Prince Albert that lovingly place necessities and small treasures in shoe boxes for kids halfway around the world who they will never meet. That's Saskatchewan people reaching out to each other and to those around the world. I encourage all of us here in this great province where so many of us have so much to share Christmas with someone who needs warmth and cheer. From me and my wife Tammy and our children, Megan, Coulter and Faith, and on behalf of my colleagues in the government of Saskatchewan, I wish for all of you a Merry Christmas, the joy and peace we all want and the hope we all need. Well, this 150th birthday celebration for Canada, they've gone all out to publish a book about Canada. I think it may be the finest book I've ever read about the development, the evolution of our country from its very beginnings until now. Paul Richardson, Bible League Canada. I think I would have to agree with David Maines. Oh man, it's just gets you just yeah. see, seeing that clip, hey? But he said this was could be the finest book that he's ever seen on the history of Canada, our Christian heritage. So share with us some more of your favorite stories of our Christian heritage. There's, there's so many. I know. And there's so many that aren't told today. Mm. And so we wanted to tell the story about what it is that, that Christ is doing in people's lives. And whether it's uh, McMaster that started a school in Hamilton or his niece, Elizabeth, that started Toronto Six Kid Hospital or whether it's Ryerson that helped create our uh, education system in Canada. All these people are individuals who first were being transformed by God's Word. They weren't perfect, but they're being transformed by God's Word. And then they helped form this nation that is truly remarkable in Canada. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's talk about Canada's name, mm. because that came from a Bible verse. Tell us that story. Well, there was a constitutional conference in 1864 in Charlottetown and the delegates from all the different colonies, the British North America, were gathering that, that previous day to determine what are we going to call this nation. They said Canada. I said, well, but there needs to be something else. And so they, they left that night and they went back to the places where they're sleeping. And, and uh, Sir Leonard Tilley was kneeling and praying. Now he and was the premier, right? Premier of New Brunswick. New Brunswick right. One of the key colonies hmm. and follower of Jesus Christ. And he was reading as his daily practice, reading God's word in Psalm 72. And he comes to the passage in King James, may God have dominion from sea to sea. And he got up off his knees and he, he rushed back to that conference and he says, uh, brothers, I, I know what we should recommend to the crown that we call this nation, the Dominion of Canada. And it's reported that, uh, that it was heard and accepted. And from that day, after the, the British North America Act, now called the Can Constitution Act 1867, we were, we were known as the Dominion of Canada for God to have dominion from sea to sea. Wow. And I remember reading that story and that John A. Macdonald, who was the, the prime minister at the time, mm -hmm. uh, actually wrote in his own handwriting to the Queen at the time that they wanted to call Canada the Dominion of Canada, other than the United Provinces of Canada or something like that, the United Kingdom of Canada, because of that Bible verse, Psalm yeah. 72, verse 8. Yeah. How phenomenal. Now, we were talking about the Peace Tower before the break, and that scripture is also on the Peace Tower, on correct? The, on the east window, high up, may God have dominion from sea to sea. Hmm. Yeah. Any other scriptures? Yeah, on the other side is where there's no vision, the people perish. Good word. And on the south window, right above it, is Psalm 72, verse 1, which talks about, about uh, the king receiving God's wisdom mm -hmm. and the king's son is righteousness. So all through the symbol of us as a nation is scripture infused in that stone as our members of parliament are walking in. Above ha them, hanging over, is this, this recognition that, that God is a dominion from sea to sea, but also we need his wisdom and we need his righteousness moving forward. Wow, powerful. So we've talked about government. We've talked about schools. We've touched on the, the healthcare system. What about business? 
treatment of employees, that type of thing. Yes, uh, there was uh, one uh, Premier of Ontario, I think it was, uh, Sir Oliver uh, Mowat, where he was the first one, again, transformed by God's word. He was the first one to bring workplace safety legislation into Canada oh. and also um, uh, forbidding child labor in factories where he wanted to be uh, um, uh, someone who is a Christian politician and he wanted to be able to make sure that the vulnerable and the, and the ones who were uh, perhaps in danger would be cared for for what no one else would be caring for. And, and so now we have a remarkable history in Canada of how we want to make sure that there's safety and want to make sure that people who really are uh, in a disadvantaged way or vulnerable, that we want to protect them. But that came out of a heart that was first transformed by God's word. Wow, amazing, amazing. So inspiring as well. I also remember reading about Toronto the Good. Was it Howland? Uh, the mayor at the time, and, or no, Timothy Eaton, actually, he brought in, uh, you know, restricted work hours as well. Wasn't there something around that? That could be. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. Yeah. <laughs> and me. <laughs> wow, powerful. One or two other of your favorite Christian heritage stories. Mm. Well, uh, the first hospital in Canada, mm. was Hotel Du in Montreal, mm. 1639, I think it was, 1640. Uh, and it was started by three women who first had been transformed by God's word and they wanted to see something that was cared for and caring for the people who are ill and, and not. That hospital, interestingly, is still functioning today. Wow. Yeah, almost, what was that, 400 years later. Unbelievable. It's still functioning today. And it was born, first of all, out of someone who had a heart that was transformed by God's word. And that was, I know I mentioned it earlier, but Elizabeth McMaster, she saw in Canada, in Toronto especially, that half of the children who died, they were dying, dying under the age of 10. Mm. And she says, well, you have to do something like this. So she opened up this, this home for children who were sick and she wanted to run it like a Christian household. So they had Bible studies and they talked about hygiene and they brought medical care in as well. Well, today that's now the Toronto Sick Kid Hospital, wow. which is incredible heritage, wow. but it came out of a heart that was first transformed by God's <laughs> word. And then God you used keep that to, saying that. <laughs> well, because Christianity so is more powerful. than checking a box exactly. on some form. It, it's, it's more than just uh, a moniker that we say, well, I'm this. It, it's, uh, Christianity is something that truly transforms a heart, truly transform. And then that transformed heart is used by God to, to, to transform a nation or to transform a village or to transform a, a house or a neighborhood or a business. Mm -hmm. But it starts with that heart that's first changed. Yeah. And then the word becomes flesh. Yeah. It dwells amongst us. We get to be like Jesus, right? And, and bring it. That's so powerful. Now, okay. Where can people find out? Where can they get this book? Sure. Where can they find out about your work? Well, first of all, they can make a donation to the, the ministry here. and we, we and Oh, yeah, we, then we'll send a book. Yeah. <laughs> and we can send it. Or you can visit our website, BibleLeague.ca. Okay, amazing. So, again, it's a One Dominion book celebrating Canada's 150th. On the back here, it says, Canada is not a nation of one story alone, but of many stories from ordinary people and often ordinary people of faith who help form the foundations of our wonderful country. We have about a minute left. Mm. Uh, Paul, would you please just lead us in a prayer of blessing for this great nation of Canada to continue to be great. Father, we thank you for the way that you've developed us as a nation, going back over 150 years, right from the early times, as people were transformed by your word. You used them to, to bring health care, medicine, uh, labor laws, uh, protection of the vulnerable, uh, protection of children, protection of animals even. You, you started uh, universities and colleges. You started hospitals and so started businesses that wanted to care for uh, people who are working there. And it, it came with a heart, first of all, that was transformed by your word. And then that transformed heart, you helped to use to, to form this nation to be the blessed nation it is today. Father, may that continue in heart after heart. And may we continue to see your word transforming our nation. And we thank you and we bless this nation and the leaders in it as they walk us towards that direction. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Faith Team. Bless you. Thank you. You too. News that Christopher Columbus had discovered lands beyond the oceans to the west inspired the adventurer John Cabot to set sail in search of new territories on behalf of the King of England. In 1497, he reached the shores of Newfoundland, and a new era of European exploration and commerce began. Once it was discovered by Columbus and others that there were whole peoples on this continent that didn't know about Jesus Christ. 
From the earliest figures like Samuel de Champlain, there is a strong missionary concern to bring the gospel to these people whom Christ loves. In 1534, Jacques Cartier arrived to explore this new world. Adapting the Indian name for village, Kanata, Jacques Cartier was the first to refer to this country as Canada. On July 20th, 1534, he raised a cross over the Gaspé Bay and claimed it for the French crown. Faith is woven throughout the history of Canada. It was even more important than commerce in the minds of most of the early European explorers and settlers. In 1608, Samuel du Champlain, considered the father of New France, sailed up the St. Lawrence to establish a trading post at the site of Quebec. A French Protestant, Champlain was eager to bring the gospel of Jesus to the peoples of Canada. There were somewhere in the order of 500 uh, tribal groups in the North American continent at the time of contact. The Mi'kmaq First Nations tribe, situated near the site of the first French settlement in Acadia, or present-day Nova Scotia, were among the first to welcome the Jesuit priests who came from France. The Jesuits' first convert was the Mi'kmaq Grand Chief, Henri Membertou. He was baptized June 24, 1610, and within a month, 140 more of his tribe were baptized. Thank you so much for being with us today to talk about our faith heritage as a nation. You know, we love Canada and that's why we do these shows. Our goal with these programs is to cover important topics for our nation and provide inspirational tools on how to build a better Canada for the future. We can't do this alone though. As a charitable ministry, we are 100% dependent on the generous donations of individuals like you who care about the future of Canada. And so we want to invite you to consider signing up to partner on a monthly basis or giving a special gift today. Currently, we are believing for 200 people who will give 30 to 50 dollars a month to help keep us at it. And when you sign up to partner for $50 a month or more, you will receive a free copy of the book we talked about today, One Dominion from the Bible League Canada. It's all about Canada's rich Christian heritage. Thank you for your consideration. Every gift and every amount makes a real difference. Call 613-552-5572 or visit faithteen.tv to join the team. God bless you and God bless Canada. Do you have a desire for you and your loved ones to grow spiritually? Check out resources by Fateen, her husband, and some of our guests online at the bookstore. When you shop, not only are you getting quality resources, but you're also helping support this ministry and program. Visit Fateen.tv today. Christmas specials will be posted throughout the fall. You can save lives in just 15 minutes a week. Prayer is powerful. It reaches where hands and feet can't. It breaks chains. It opens eyes. It opens doors. It can set people free. Through the Justice Wall, you can be a part of a prayer chain interceding 24-7 for the ending of abortion, ending of human trafficking, and for the persecuted church. You can save lives through prayer. Only 15 minutes a week. Join the Justice Wall today. Find out more at justicewall.com.